Huh? Huh? See that? Data one key giveaway! What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another State of the Realms episode. I'm your host, Swiper, and today I'll be going over the weekly wrap-up for 726-2019. If you are new to my channel, every week I do a brief overview of the weekly wrap-up hosted by Camelot Unchained. I typically go over five of their top 10-ish items and five of my favorite questions asked. So if you're interested in their show, I'll post the link in the description below. And if you've been following me each week, I just want to say thank you. That means a lot to me. So last week, you may have realized that I didn't do a show, and that was because I was in North Carolina. So my wife, my dog, and a big portion of her family rented out a house that was right on the beach. Well, close to it. Uh, I got to do a lot of cool things like try surfing, which I failed miserably at, and... My advice to anybody is get lessons. Don't try it on your own. It's extremely difficult. I also did some skimboarding, tried some seafood. Overall, it was a really great time. I am glad I'm back and I'm ready to get back into the swing of things. So let's get started with my top five-ish. All right, starting with number one, tech and PC behavior. So a messaging framework for NPCs has been started. So what exactly does this mean? Well, it sounds like they're gonna have like an NPC server and a physics server. This messaging framework is gonna allow the NPCs to communicate with the physics server. So this is gonna help with um, pathing and line of sight. So like many of you that have tested this game, you've seen NPCs just literally run into a rock or like a giant rock or a wall and they just continue to run, 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 and they're not going anywhere. So it sounds like they're not making a message or a connection with this physics server yet. So I think once this is all set up, they'll be able to send messages back and forth and literally move around or not even run into it. So this is going to be great and this is going to be awesome for the gameplay overall. All right, number two, tech, improving knockback. So this is a pretty straightforward update. The team recently moved to making knockbacks look and feel better. This should help with latency and rubber banding landing. This will continue to see updates because it's not exactly where they want it. So you'll probably see more updates here and there about them tweaking and trying to make this feel appropriate. All right, number three, concept art, Draugar color. So the team knocked out nine color ideas last week for the Draugar NPC concepts. So I know this is kind of small, but there is a little mention that these guys might be in the depths. And anytime I hear about the depths, I get excited. So yeah, we got some things for the depths. Well, okay, maybe we do. I don't think that's anything definite, but these guys look freaking awesome. I mean, check these things out, right? All right, moving on to number four, tech and loot. The team created a method for handling items that are only visible and usable for a specific character in the game. This can be used for a specific player so they can drop or pick up an item. So pretty straightforward. All right, and for number five, tech ability system. So I believe this update was in last week's, but I liked it so much that I wanted to include it in this week. So the team began investigating more functionality needed for the ability system specifically pointing to the like mobility based uh, skills and the ability to throw weapons. So it sounds like maybe some of these functions could be with the support classes. And I know they're working on the support classes. I'm thinking that like in Dark Age of Camelot, the support classes or I guess the speed classes um, will have some type of like song or some type of ability to make everybody faster. So I'm hoping that this is what they're kind of hinting towards, but I could totally be wrong. All right, moving on to the Q&A section, starting with question number one. Does CU have a PvP realm rank or realm rank point system like Dark Age of Camelot did? So the quick answer to this is no. This is because characters in CU will not be capped out. Everything is RVR unless you're crafting. So at this moment in time, they're basically saying they don't really see purpose for this. If at some point they need to do something different because players have soft capped all of their characters, then it could be worth checking out. But for now, it doesn't seem like they need this type of system in their game. All right, question number two. Do you see NPCs being interactive, like being able to communicate with each other and pass around scouting reports and things like that? So Mark went into a lot of detail regarding this. So I'll try and summarize this the best I can. Um, so they understand they need NPCs to do more than just stand around. 
they also understand that they need guards to protect keeps and other things that players own. The last thing they want are scheduled sieges, which I agree with. I hope they never do that because I've always hated that in games. Um, they basically want this game to feel as open as possible. And the only way you can do that is if when you have a keep is to have defenses there when you're not there. Mark also mentions that they know from games like Dark Age and other games that guards do not solve everything, but it is important that they have good and useful NPCs. All right, moving on to number three. Will it take hours and hours and hours to escort a caravan? So first off, Mark says no. If that's the case, then this game will become very boring very fast. He said the length of time will depend on what area you're in. So for example, if you are in a safe area that you own, it may be shorter verse if you are in an enemy territory that they own. It all depends on where you are getting the supplies. Mark also brings up that let's say you're really far away. Now there will be a way to set up a way station so guards can escort it the rest of the way. They also mention something about not having teleportation. This way people can actually fight each other. So the overall message I think Mark wants to convey here is that he doesn't want this system to be super ridiculous, but he also doesn't want to make it painfully easy. All right, moving on to question number four. Would CU change content after they launch, like adding PVE content? Content. So this is another quick but two-part response. First off, adding PvE content before the game launches, that's a no. And the overall reaction to after the game launches, that was a no. So then Mark kind of takes a step back and says, well, let's say vast majority of players or the backers said they wanted PvE, like upper 90%, like upper 90%. Uh, this would be something they would start to think about and they'd have to think about if this is something they could afford. And they basically said that, hey, if the backers are this adamant and it's over 90 some percent of people, it wouldn't be right for them not to at least consider it. They also said that this game is really built for us. You know, the backers, the people that are supporting it, the people that want to support it. So. You know, like he said, if it's huge, if it's like 90 some percent, then they'll think about it. And what feels good about this overall is that uh, they're listening. And really my two cents on this is anybody that wants to play this game, that's backing this game, that's thinking about backing this game, knows that this is going to be PvP centric. And if they were expecting a whole lot of PvE, they probably would have moved on to another game or, wait, or waiting for another PvE game or playing another PvE game right now. So I don't think this is something we really have to worry about, but it was an excellent question that I wanted to bring. Up. All right, question number five. What is the worst nightmare on this very day? Would it be release day? Is it Alien Takeover? And I think there are some other examples that they use that were pretty good. But off the bat, I just want to say how much I love this question and how much I loved Mark's response. This was brought up before, I think, on another stream, but this time it really resonated with me because I was a big Warhammer fan. So first off, his biggest fear is letting the backers players down when it comes to CU. Mark says that he always tried to hold himself to a higher standard standard and he still does today. He hates the notion that he could be letting someone down, especially when it comes to us and the backers. He never wants to feel this way. So he started to talk a little bit about EA and Warhammer and how, in his opinion, he voiced that the game was not ready to launch. He mentions that maybe he could have fought a little bit more, but he didn't feel like it was his job. You know, he voiced his opinion, had little support, and... Well, we all know what happened. He shared a few thoughts, but one thought hit me really hard. He said, I wonder if I would have flown out to California and slammed on some desks. Maybe they would have listened or maybe they would have fired me. But overall, he did say that he felt like he could have done more. So here's where I want to give my response. I have no idea um, if these guys at CU watch or listen to my stream and to me it's, you know, it'd be cool if they did. But if they don't, it's not a big deal. Really why I'm doing this is to promote this game, to get more people interested and to get more people to check out the news. But anyway, um, I hope to God he does not blame himself for this. I think the vast majority of players understand that this game was not ready for launch. I mean, I remember countless issues in my shaman where animations would get stuck. I remember putting a hot on myself and that animation would just swirl and swirl and swirl over myself. Even when the time counted down, I had to literally log out and get back in. Um, I remember also having a laser beam that would shoot at somebody and it would stick to them like forever. And it was crazy because everyone's like, oh, hey, there's a shaman because that was like one of the abilities it was awesome, but everybody knew where you were. And 
it would go past like the timing. I would be casting other abilities while still shooting that laser. Like it was crazy. I also remember small things like running into small objects I should have walked over. I couldn't and got stuck. You know, simple and small things like that I don't think are easy for programming, but they were very apparent. And one thing that really got to me was that a lot of people would trade keep or let's say they're getting their asses kicked in RVR. They would just queue up for a battleground and then their side would be winning the battlegrounds because that's where all their players were and all of our players were doing the RVR, which I thought was the best. Um, so overall, you know, I loved the game and I stuck with it until, you know, they basically killed it off. And hearing Mark say these things, it makes me very happy, but it also makes me very sad because he is taking the blame that I don't think he should be taking the blame for. I mean, I believe him. I believe he was adamant about not launching the game, you know? And what's good about this, right, is that this is telling all of us that he understands what kind of game he wants to give us. I feel like him as, and his team are in control and there's going to be, nobody is going to sit there and say, you know what, you got to put this out now. I don't care the state of it. You got to put it out now. We have to appease the shareholders. You know, I know a lot of us are kind of technically shareholders. We're supporting this game, but overall, they're going to deliver a game that we're going to be happy with. And that makes me incredibly happy. And not to bash on EA or anything, but literally just look them up. Honestly, if you're not in gaming news, type in EA in loot boxes in YouTube and you'll find all sorts of fun stuff. So overall, um, I really appreciate this question. I appreciate his response. And if he's listening, I hope he's heeding my words and I hope he understands that hey, nobody blames you for this. At least I don't. And I don't think any sensible player would. You know, obviously there are higher ups that can just make decisions. Maybe they weren't connected to everything or maybe they're just more focused on deadlines and money. Who the hell knows? But all I know is that I love the game. I enjoyed the game. I got frustrated with the bugs, but I have full faith that Pamela Unchained is not going to go down that route and we are going to get a fantastic product. All right, enough with the politics and my strange, weird love for Camelot Unchained. I think I've gone on long enough, so please, everyone, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up, will ya? And if you want weekly updates regarding Camelot Unchained and MMORPG greatness, please hit that subscribe button. Oh, and before I forget, anyone that's interested in receiving a Beta 1 key can participate in Question of the Week, a little stupid segment I just made up. All right, so let's go over a few things before we jump into the rules. First off, I only have one Beta 1 key invite, and I'd like to do more of these in the future. Number two, the questions I want people to ask are only related to CU. Questions that we can ask Mark and, and all the developers at, uh, you know, City State Entertainment. And no, when is a release date? We'll not qualify as a legitimate question because we all know that. Let's start with rule number one. The best question that is asked will receive the beta one key invite. Rule number two, only one question per person. So think about the question you want to ask and ask it. Rule number three, if I see an edited comment uh, in the comment section, I will delete because I can't see what was originally asked and I don't want somebody stealing somebody else's question. Rule number four, no duplicate questions. So if somebody asks a question and then somebody sees that question, likes it and asks the same question, the first person that asks that question owns that question. So nobody after that point can ask that question. This ties into the whole editing concept. And the last rule is I will only be checking my YouTube account when looking for questions. Reason being that I want one central location so everybody can see what questions have been asked so they have the opportunity to ask a different question. Also, please keep all the questions related to this contest only in this video. Meaning, if you want to participate in this contest, ask the question on this specific video. Next week, I'll be doing another video. And I'll clarify, please don't ask the questions during this video. Please keep all the questions again in the comment section below for this video. Those are the only questions I'll be reading and submitting for the contest. Okay, so I hope that all the rules make sense. Let's talk about the contest in general. So the contest will start today, 07-27-2019, and it will end on August 5th, 2019. You can submit your questions up until August 5th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will announce the winner on my Twitch channel while live streaming. For any reason, I can't decide on just one question, meaning I have multiple questions that I love. I'll have to pick one of them at random. 
Maybe I'll do one of those like spin wheel things or something. Pretty cool, yeah. So you no, know, you don't have to be in my Twitch channel to actually win. Um, if you want to have some fun, you know, come join in. But as soon as I pick the winner, I'll reach out to the person that submitted the question and I will give you the key. So I hope everyone has fun with this. I hope I get a lot of participants. I hope I don't just get one person that's just going to automatically win because it's just one person. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great weekend.